everybody, Zachary Levi here. Over the last few months, we've brought you exclusive behind the scenes looks at the final hours of development of Tomb Raider. We've seen Camilla recording her last few lines, Rihanna using her last few words, and Jason completing the last few notes of the score. As those key pieces lock into place, it's time to reveal one of the last portions of the game and a team that's been shrouded in secrecy for two years. We're here in the beautiful and freezing Montreal, Canada, to bring you the final hours of Tomb Raider, multiplayer edition. These are the final hours of Tomb Raider. Welcome to yet another world-class studio in the Square Enix portfolio, Eidos Montreal, home of the multi-award winning game, Deus Ex. Locked away in one of the far corners of the studio is a team of experienced, passionate professionals who have been specially brought together to create the first ever multiplayer component to the Tomb Raider universe. Let's meet the team behind the vision, direction, and decisions, and hopefully get a chance to play a few rounds. Here we are at uh, Eidos Montreal. Before we get into why we're here, Carl, you now have <laughs> an amazing stash, my friend. What is the impetus behind this? Uh, so, uh, as a studio, we've been participating in Movember. A good friend of mine, JJ Owens, works for Movember in LA. Um, we set up the gaming challenge and we brought studios from all around the world together. Uh, I think so far we've raised somewhere in a region of $140,000, $150,000. Well been, done. Uh, been a big success, although my wife doesn't necessarily always approve. She hates it. Oh, my no, 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 no. She says that she hates it. She secretly loves it. What were some of the factors that led to a multiplayer facet to this new Tomb Raider? When we started developing uh, sort of our vision for reimagining Tomb Raider, on paper it was all about single player. And as we started to build that world out, we had the island, we had the Solari and the scavengers. We started to realize that we had this canvas. Great warring uh, factions, great landscapes. Yeah, yeah, we had all these really awesome places where it was all about traversal and single player. When we started looking at that, we thought, wow, well, what about multiplayer? Part of the genesis of that was Lara Croft and the Guardian of Light that kind of cracked open a door to lead you guys into the multiplayer into here at Eidos Montreal. Guardian of Light was a downloadable, a smaller scale project, and that allowed us to sort of take the risks that we wouldn't necessarily take on a, a full-blown project. Guardian of Light was our Pixar short. It's the idea that whilst you're building your big project, you're always thinking about that next thing. But also allowed us to be able to uh, start understanding co-oping and networking. It was a game that actually brought Tomb Raider fans together for one of the very first times. You hear them in their ear and they were having fun. And as a result of that, that led to us thinking about multiplayer. <coughs> Hopefully our single player experience we're delivering is a very sort of single player, solitary, immersive type of experience. But at the same time, we believed Tomb Raiding together with friends would be fun. Tomb Raiding, I think that's the first time I've ever heard that term, I, mean, I like that. It's, it's fun. You know, axe climbing and zip lining and, and the traversal that we get in there and the traps. For me, it was very sad to have that catch-22 of it would be great to do this in multiplayer, but we just can't split our resources like that. And that's how I just Montreal came about. We had staffed up our teams to develop a single player. Everybody was gelling together really well, and it wasn't something that we wanted to just bolt on. We always said if we were going to do it, we are going to do it right. If you could have a fan play the multiplayer for the first time, what do you want them saying? For me, they're kind of different moods. It's not like I do one or the other. It's kind of like sometimes I turn down the lights and just yeah. play that single player experience. And other times I want to just jump in and have fun and start uh, killing, start fools. killing <laughs> fools. Joe Curry, producer of multiplayer on Tomb Raider. Yeah. It's the first time Tomb Raider has ever incorporated multiplayer. Yeah. And you're in charge of that. Yeah. What's running through your mind when you get that call? Well, first off, exciting. Right, I mean, we're all huge fans of Tomb Raider on the team. I mean, we grew up with Lara Croft. And, mm -hmm. But when we spoke to Crystal, like, we want to do multiplayer, and we're thinking, how do you do that? It's always been Lara's story. You've been in charge of creating the first ever Lara Croft Tomb Raider. No pressure. Multiplayer. <laughs> no pressure, Zach. Thank you. What are some of the main pillars that you brought over from the single player to the multiplayer to make those two worlds cohesive? The element that really stuck out was survival. The group surviving together. Right. But then traversal, the ability to go up and down and, and kind of everywhere in a level. The weapons, you know, the characters. What did you guys have to tweak in order to create an engaging multiplayer experience that wouldn't necessarily work with the pieces that were in play with the single player experience? 
One example is the boat. Especially in this, in the reboot, it's so iconic that we had to make it work for multiplayer. You have a certain forgiveness when you play single player. Multiplayer, players expect snappiness. I shoot you, I expect you to go down. Or you can just do what I do, which is to take out the biggest gun and just run for them <laughs> and shoot them out. <laughs> the environment itself can be a threat. The Solari, you know, the guys that are on the island have had a chance to prepare traps. We've got things like an ammo box that looks like an ammo box, but it's really an explosive device. I need ammo, and, you and it looks just like the regular ammo box, and then you're gonzo. We have a lightning rod. You'll get a lightning strike on the rod, and then you'll eliminate your enemy. First and foremost, we want to be humble. We want players to just have a really memorable experience. I had fun doing this. Do you remember when we set that trap? Moments that the players will come back to and talk about experiences that they've had for themselves, not necessarily the game offering them experiences. Absolutely. So, Joe, behind us we have the QA team, or the quality assurance team. They're a part of the development team. They can tell us what we need to fix and what's working and what's not. When do I get to game test? When do I get to get my hands on the game? Soon. We got a surprise for you first, Zach. So, when I was approached to host the final hours of Tomb Raider, essentially the biggest ask, not even ask, tell that I had was, I want to be in the game. I want to have a cameo, I want to have something. So guess what? Boom! 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 I'm a playable character in the multiplayer Tomb Raider. How sick is that, Joe? You and your team are awesome. Uh, I can play with myself, virtually. Are we ready? Ah! Oh, that burns! Oh, suck! Get those transmitters running. Radio transmitter activated! We're getting off this damn island? We send this thing. Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> I would like to try and kick your butt as me in this map right now. Should Bring we it. try it? All right. Bring it. Let's do it. It's happening right now. Oh, nice! Was that one of my traps? That was. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, these movie traps are really fun. I mean, they're really, really fun. <laughs> yeah! Don't worry about it. Just because you made the game and I beat it. <laughs> As you can see from the people and passion here at Eidos Montreal, this isn't just some add-on. They're devoting themselves to making this an experience in keeping with the feeling of single player. Familiar, yet different. Coming up in the final two episodes of our series, we go back to the home of Lara Croft. They're taking Tomb Raider to the finish line, and we'll be there for it.